Today we'll put the Model Y head to head with the new 2024 Cadillac Lyric. We'll take you through the elements and the mountains with our family of five, testing utility, range, and charging to see how the Lyric stacks up. So growing up, people used to say it's the Cadillac of for anything that was luxurious or high end. But over the last few years, that has kind of shifted. So anything modern or advanced, people now say it's the Tesla of. So today we're gonna find out who holds the best in class. Is it the Cadillac Lyric or the Tesla Model Y? I think you guys are gonna be surprised. Let's get into it. So today we are checking out a 2024 Cadillac Lyric. So there's a couple differences between the 2023 and the 24. They've now added three different trim levels and they've fixed a couple of these quirky little things that I'm gonna get into. But a little bit about me, my name is Kim Java. I have been driving EVs for about 10 years now. My daily driver is a Tesla Model X. We also own a Tesla Model 3. And today I borrowed my friend's Tesla Model Y to kind of give you guys a comparison in terms of size to the Cadillac Lyric. You can't compare these two EVs without first confronting the dramatic shift in their pricing over the past 12 months. Last August, an all-wheel drive Lyric started at six. $65,000 while a dual motor Model Y was $66,000. Fast forward 12 months and today that same Model Y now starts at $51,000 while the Lyric at $62,000. But is the Lyric really worth the price of admission? All right guys, before we jump in, just a reminder that we are coming up on the drawing to win some amazing EVs while supporting one of the top nonprofits fighting climate change. Today's sponsor, Seacan Action Fund, has one of the best odds of any EV raffle I've ever seen. They're actually undersold for this raffle and it's going to be closing on August 24th. And they're only selling 5,500 tickets and the prizes have some really insane cars on them. You get to pick between a Lucid Air, a Rivian R1S or T, or a Plaid Model X, plus 10 years worth of free charging. The winner gets to choose. The tickets are only $200. You can get them at evraffle.org. I'll link it down below, but it's evraffle.org. All right, let's get back to the the video. Now if you go to the front, right here we have this black crystal shield. It's a really wide kind of aggressive looking front to a vehicle. Now something some EVs, a lot of new EVs are actually doing is that instead of a traditional grill, which electric cars don't need, they're trying to be different, do something different. And here they've added all kinds of cool light features to this, especially in the nighttime. It definitely stands out. You also have this chrome detail on the top and the bottom of it. We have the air vents. So we have stacked projector LED lights right here and then vertical daytime running lights. We also have sequential turning signals on the front. Again, this look may not be for everyone. It is kind of almost like a more masculine feature, but I think that Cadillac has done a really good job of kind of branding this and making it their own. We're probably gonna see something similar here on the Escalade coming up. So we rented this Lyric off of Turo. It's a 2024. The owner said that he had to wait two years to get it. He just took delivery of it. I'm amazed that he's even renting it out to us, but I'm so glad he is so that I can share it with you guys. As you may know, there's not too many 2024s out there and I haven't seen very many videos at all. So this might be the only one, but check out the wheels. He got the 20 inch wheels. There are 22 inch available as well, but with the 20 inch, you do get the best range. Now it kind of has this sort of like arrow insert within the wheels that will give you better range as well. And then moving along over here, we have the charge port right up front. Now with Cadillac, you actually push on the logo to open it and it mechanically opens. It is a little bit flimsy, but to me that is not a deal breaker. I don't feel like this is something that's going to break off. Up here we have the J1772 and then we have the CCS. But in terms of this whole CCS charging system, Cadillac has decided to jump board with Tesla and they're gonna be using the NACS charging um, in 2025. So this is not gonna be sticking around too much longer. When it comes to range, charging, and efficiency, that's where it gets interesting. The dual motor Model Y uses an 81 kilowatt hour battery pack and is good for 330 miles of range. An all wheel drive Lyric uses a 102 kilowatt hour pack and is good for 307 miles of range. But after putting it through some real world driving later in this video, we were blown away at just how much more range the Lyric was capable of. But in order to close the charger, super easy. You just push a button. 
As a mid-sized SUV, its footprint is quite a bit different than the Model Ys. Though they share an almost identical height of 64 inches, the Lyric is 2 inches wider and a whopping 10 inches longer than the Model Y. But does that actually translate into more cargo capacity? This is where they really lose out on cargo capacity. There is no front trunk in this vehicle. Now you do have access to the wiper fluid up here. Emergency officials could come here and cut the wiring if they needed to. They actually have the space for a front trunk. Look at this. Take this out. There's a nice little well in there and if they move some of this wiring to the side, they could definitely put a little front trunk, but they didn't do this because they've done some focus groups and EV owners reported that they don't really utilize their front trunks, which I think is really weird because the people in those focus groups are probably not parents. Every parent I talk to utilizes that front trunk. I put strollers in there and that's kind of a biggie for me when I'm looking at electric vehicles. Also to close this thing, you really have to slam it just like you know any traditional vehicle. That's how you close it. So let me show you the Model Y front trunk just for comparison. So this is actually four cubic feet of cargo space right here. You can fit a small stroller. Um, I used to put a changing table in here. When you go to a restaurant and you have leftovers, you put it in here. The smell doesn't go into the cabin of the car. It's really nice to have a front trunk. And I'm just so sad that the Lyric doesn't have that. What I think is really interesting and unique about this car is really the lighting that we see. So these lights actually wrap all the way around right here. I'm gonna show it to you. So you can see the turning signal goes all the way around the vehicle. This is really unique. I have not seen this on any other vehicle. And then the brake light also becomes part of the turning signal. Um, that's huge right there. That's a giant turning signal. Um, the brake lights again are really on the edges of this vehicle, kind of giving it this wide looking back. It's actually not that much wider though at all than the Model Y. It just looks that way, I think, because of where the light, the brake lights are. Um, also with the brake lights, if you guys notice, there's one right up here as well. Overall, I think that this is a really, really nice looking rear end. So on the charge port, you push that Cadillac logo and they've carried that to the back of the car. So to open it up, you actually, once again, push on the Cadillac logo. It opens up and then we have a pretty good size trunk space. You have 28 cubic feet, just for comparison, the Model Y is 30, so it's really similar in size to the Model Y. Now, the sub trunk is a little bit smaller. This is brand new, so they still have everything all packaged up. But I would say that you could probably fit maybe eight cartons of milk back here um, if you're trying to think about what you could actually fit. And it's pretty deep, you know, it goes right to my elbow. We have four cargo hooks around the vehicle. Right here, we do have a 12 volt port. We also have for your car seats, we have all the top tethers, all three across. If you wanna see it compared to the Model Y, we'll head on over here. So you can see overall it is similar size. Now this one is a seven seat and something kind of cool about the Tesla Model Y is that you do have that option to configure with a third row where you do not have that option with the Cadillac Lyric. Now with the five seats, this would be a little bit lower and it would give you just a few more inches of cargo capacity. But something pretty cool is you have these deep wheel wells. You do not have that with the Cadillac Lyric. You can see that there's room to store your cleaning supplies right there. And then when you open up the sub trunk, it's almost double the size that the Cadillac Lyric is. So that's just some extra cargo capacity that we don't have with the Lyric. Now with the Lyric, with the seats folded flat, the car's extra 10 inches of length doesn't actually translate into extra cargo capacity. The five seat Model Y offers an additional 16 cubic feet of storage space with seats folded. But what's really interesting are the door handles. So these have changed from 2023 to 2024. So the ones that I've seen out there on the internet that were the 2023s were sort of a combination between a Model 3 and I would say a Model X. So it was a push button and then you had to pull it out. People didn't really love them. So they've definitely, again, listened to their customers and they've changed it. Now it's more of a Model 3, Model S mix. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Look at how it auto presents. So it is very similar kind of to the Model S in that it auto presents. 
All right, so let's check out the interior. Right away, it looks pretty lush, right? We have leather, we have stitching, we have the brushed chrome, we have the wood accents, and then right here, you have your heated and your ventilated seats. We have your seat controls, even massaging seats for some trim levels. We also have your basic window and your mirror controls right here on your door. And what I love about the cup holder down here, there's actually a spot for your cup so it doesn't fall over or slosh around while you're driving. So take a look at these seats. Now there are four different seat colors. This is the black, it's ventilated. This blue stitch is really cool. I love this headrest. It kind of gives you that a little bit of that wow factor. Now the one I saw at CS did have a light gray interior and I think I do like that one slightly better. I also love this bridge style console. It gives me a place to put my bag right when I sit down right away. So to turn the vehicle on, you do have to put your foot on the brake and then do a push button. Now I feel like most electric cars are kind of getting away from the button. I know Tesla, you just get inside and it turns on automatically. But a few weeks ago, we reviewed the Mercedes EQS SUV and it did have that same push button. I personally am not a fan of that. Um, so I'm gonna give that one to Tesla. But let's take a look at the AC because that's the second thing that I do when I get into a vehicle. And this is definitely different than Tesla. And I wasn't sure if I would be a fan of these dials. So you can turn them on or off and then you can manually rotate them. They're actually not bad. I do kind of like that tactile feeling more than I thought I would. You have access to all the elements for your HVAC right here with these buttons. You also have access to them on the screen. I actually kind of like having this separate as well. With Tesla, it's very seamless right across. It's such a different experience. Coming in here though, this does feel really luxury. You're getting that with the Cadillac experience. And then you look in front of you and we have this amazing 33 inch diagonal LED display. It also is touchscreen on this side and it has 9K resolution, which is kind of insane. The 33 inch curved LED screen is one of the nicest and most intuitive screens we've tested on any EV. Although it looks like one large piece of glass is actually broken up into three sections with the far left being a touch screen that allows for quick controls like driver assist displays, maps, which are natively Google maps, your energy displays, or simply a gauge cluster. The center part of the screen is also a customizable touch screen and has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay built in. The car also has has onboard Wi-Fi, customizable 26 color ambient lighting, and a dial in the center console if you prefer making selections that way. But we'll dive in a bit more once we get the family and drive up into the mountains to test it all out. There's a nice little drawer right here for your sunglasses. And the old ones used to have a felt lining. These ones, they've kind of moved away from that and it looks like it's just leather in here, but it will protect your sunglasses and it's a great spot to keep them. And then your phone can charge right here in the wireless charger. And I think that that is nice to be able to have that right up front with you. Now you do have options for USB-C right here, here, and then when you open this up, there is another USB-C right here and then we have that 12 volt charger as well. So now that the AC is going, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the sunroof right here. So you can remove this, you get this full fixed glass roof, which is really nice, gorgeous views. This is really fun. My kids love having this. We can watch airplanes flying over us, all kinds of stuff. But because it is a full fixed glass roof and you don't have that pillar, you can't open it up like you could with some kind of sunroof, um, which the Mercedes EQS did have. And that was kind of nice. We're starting to see this with more and more vehicles. I like being able to have the space for a bag and then, you know, room up here to put a cup. The only thing that I do not like is the piano gloss. In theory, this looks great in a showroom, but in practicality, it's always covered in fingerprints and just, it doesn't look right when you're actually using it. I wanna show you guys the back seat. Now to get out of the car, you actually pull this lever. Those coming from Tesla will know that there's a lever in a similar place, but it's not something that you wanna use. It's actually the emergency release for the door and it's not good for your car to use it. All right, back seat. So lots of leg room. That's the first thing that stands out to me right now is that you have a lot of space in here. Again, I'm 5'5", five five, but I've seen videos of other people who are six foot plus um, having the seat all the way back and then still being able to have enough leg room sitting in the second row. So I think that that is a huge plus for the Lyric. We do have the same ventilation knobs in the back. Honestly, I'm not a fan of having these in the back because I feel like they could break off really 
easily. A few minutes later. And look at what is already happening right here. Look at where her feet are. Like, this is what I was talking about. Having these in the second row might not be the best idea. We do have two USB-Cs back here as well. Now, I thought I saw somewhere with the 2023 model, there was actually a 110 volt, but that doesn't appear to be in this 2024 model. We have cup holders. I love when cars do this for car seats. It makes it really easy to install the latch system. Now, you don't have them in the center. I really do love the stitching details. Now, check this out. This looks like it was never tucked in. This vehicle is brand new and people always give Tesla such a hard time, but you do see it across the board with all vehicles. But look at, there's still some glue on here from the factory. Now people always pick on Tesla, but again, here we see it with Cadillac. So. so just to show you guys how new this car is, they tried to remove most of the adhesive, but they still left some right here on the steering wheel. There's still some right over here. First off with this vehicle, I do not have super cruise. And that's something that I was really hoping that we would have in here. And I didn't discover until I actually got in here. All lyrics do come standard though with Cadillac's basic driver assist features like adaptive cruise control, blind zone steering and park assist, which has vibrating sensors inside the seat bottom that alert you of any obstacle and vibrates in specific areas of the seat corresponding with the obstacle. There again, it's vibrating. It, it's telling me that I'm getting close to that vehicle. It's vibrating right about here. But to get the full suite of level two autonomy, you'll need Super Cruise, which gives you hands-free driving and auto lane change features. We tested the luxury one trim and Cadillac requires a $4,000 upgrade to the luxury two trim to get Super Cruise. Plus there's a $25 a month subscription fee after your free three-year trial ends. All right, so now that you guys have had the full tour of the car, you wanna know how does it drive? So we are gonna take it on a little mini road trip with our kids, have the whole family in here so you can see the actual practicality of it. How does it charge? How fast does it charge? How do I plan a road trip? We have some fun planned for today. We're gonna take it for about a 200 mile drive. We're gonna have windy roads, lots of highway driving, and some elevation gain as we take it to the highest point in Georgia. One thing that kind of irks me about cars is that they still put these 12 volts in because what we really need is a 110 volt. I'm sure it's more expensive and that's why they do this, but we always need these. And I feel like most people own one of these nowadays, but like, why not just switch it over in the car? I mean. Here's our extra battery just for you guys. And we are deep into the princess stage of life. So all you other parents out there can commiserate with me. Ow, are you okay? <laughs> One of the nice things about the Lyric is that it actually does come with a home charger. We know with Tesla, now you have to pay for the chargers with Tesla. Well, the Lyric actually does include that with the price of it. Liam is asking for Wi-Fi, so here we go. Families who Wi-Fi together, stay together. Open that up. Yeah. Open that up. I know, I wish we could. We can't in this car. Though our Lyric is EPA rated for 314 miles of range, it showed an impressive 337 mile potential. In the driver's seat, your vantage point does feel a bit lower than the Model Y, though you quickly forget when you feel how incredibly comfortable the ride truly is. In fact, the suspension felt so much smoother over bumpy roads that I had to verify it wasn't air suspension. You really almost feel like you're gliding or floating on the road. It's a really nice experience. The Lyric has a five link front and rear suspension with frequency dependent dampers that can differentiate between smaller and larger impacts on the road surface. This was a noticeably smoother ride than the Model Y and closer to what you'd find in the air suspension of our Model X. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can add some waypoints in. It does not look like I actually have the option for waypoints in here. Now we can use Apple CarPlay, but I'm not exactly sure if that's gonna give me my SOC where this does give me my state of charge on arrival. An odd quirk we found with the Lyric is that although you can always see how many miles of range you have, there's really no way to check your current percentage while you're driving. You guys have obviously been in the Model 3, you've been in the Model Y, you've been in the Mercedes. They're like expert back row drivers. How does it feel compared to those vehicles? I feel like definitely better than Model Y and Model 3. Did it have internet? Oh, Liam's 
what Liam, all Liam yeah. cares about is that it has Wi-Fi. So, um, yeah. winning. Getting on to the highway. Very quiet in the cabin right now. I would say it's even definitely better than the Model Y and possibly even better than our Model X. It's more in line with the Mercedes EQS that we just tested recently in terms of just, you don't hear any road noise at all. It's very minimal, if anything. I feel like I need to turn on bio defense mode though because somebody let it rip back there. One of my favorite features in the Lyric was probably the regen braking. It's a complete one pedal driving experience with multiple levels of regeneration with the strongest setting almost feeling more aggressive than all of our Teslas, which was nice to see since most EVs we've tested lack a strong regen. If you're not used to regen driving, they have this option right here to add regen in so you could have it on a weaker regen and then use this paddle. That is actually kind of a nice option for people that are just not used to the regen driving. Maybe they get car sick easily, um, they have this option. Option. I'm trying to use adaptive cruise control right here and I'm supposed to get something that pops up right here when the conditions are perfect which they are right now but it's not working now there was a message when the car was delivered saying that some of the driver's assist features needed to be serviced so this could be why I can't get it to work clearly there were some things when this car was delivered in terms of fit and finish as well as now some tech stuff that was not you know perfect in any way. Obviously this car gets software updates so they can take care of a lot of these issues, but I am bummed not to be able to try out Super Cruise. It's completely hands-free. Um, it would have been a nice comparison to Tesla. I do hear really good things about it. Oh my goodness. Look at how cute it is up here. Oh and that. Oh man, I know where we're stopping on the way back. I wasn't paying attention right now because I was looking at the donkey. I kind of started to get close to the lane right here and the lane keeping features are on and my seat vibrated at the same time. So I did like that because again, I wasn't paying attention, but when you feel your seat, it automatically just sort of like puts you in check. Our first stop was a place that I've always wanted to go after having a daughter, Babyland. Hidden in the mountains of northern Georgia is known as the birthplace for the original Cabbage Patch Kids dolls. How excited are you boys about Cabbage Patch dolls? <laughs> she never wants like actual people. She wants animals. I like this one. Look at her dress matches your other dress. The dress you were supposed to wear today. That's crazy though. The what? Nothing. I'm not I'm not saying anything, but I can't believe that that Cabbage Patch dolls and I do have a little something in common. <laughs> get an outfit for it. I feel like mommy's having they more fun than Lake and I kind of think that might be true. <laughs> it looks like Ronaldo, the one that played for Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give Mother Cabbage a dose of magicillin. Only help to loosen her leaves for a smoother delivery. Hey. Wildly traumatizing, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> definitely has some cracks and some potholes and it's still really smooth. I'm not even noticing them. I mean, you can slightly feel it, but right there, you know. Do you feel any kind of body roll when we go around these corners? I feel a little bit. I'm actually surprised that I feel so much. Are you having fun? Is this exactly what you had in mind when you said, let's get the highest point in Georgia, just a small little height. This is nice. Right. Are you having fun, Lakey? Yeah. Check it out, Landon. 4,784 feet. There's no one in the state that's above you right now. And in Atlanta, it's about 90 degrees. It's almost 30 degrees cooler here. Isn't that crazy? Daddy, I go in Atlanta. This is the situation we have going on, Liam. We've swapped positions. My husband's over here Swap driving. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean it like that. So any first impressions of driving the Lyric? It's probably one of the more compelling EVs, especially at this price point, you know, where you're going to get into the low to mid 60s. And at that price point, you're not going to find any other EV, I don't think, with this level of interior creature comforts. Of course, just the ride quality, how quiet it is in the cabin. Look at this, we're going into the clouds here in the mountains. It is the place to be. How about this for an interview? I think we're right around 4,000 feet. Okay, you're going back to being a meteorologist <laughs> right now. All right, we're, we're doing a car review. <laughs> but like I was saying, when you're looking at the price point of around $60,000, 
you're not going to get an interior that's much nicer than this for an EV. You've got the Ionics, you've got the Teslas, and also the Mach-E. Really great cars, all have a lot of great features about them. This also, you know, not only feels it on the inside, a lot of those other cars were thinking about the inside aesthetics. Outside, it is a showstopper. We've had so many people stop us. So I do think though that some of those other cars that you mentioned are not really trying to be luxury, they're trying to be more affordable. For Cadillac, especially with Lyric, with this one, they're trying to combine both of those into it. That's a good point. I could see that. But then you're not quite there like the iX for BMW or the EQE for mm -hmm. Mercedes or Audi e-tron. So it is really the sweet spot of getting a lot of these interior premium um, creature comforts, even massaging seats if you get that trim, and then, you know, not, not quite as expensive as those seventy-five to $90,000 SUVs. So would you call this luxury? I would call this luxury, absolutely. And I don't know if I would say that about Tesla. I almost would say Tesla is premium, but then luxury is a step above premium. I don't even know if I would say like the Model Y is premium though. Okay. I, w I think that's more of just like a tech car. Okay. It's very, just has everything that you need. It works great. Now I think when we get into the Model X and the Model S, maybe a little more premium, but honestly, yeah. it doesn't compare yeah. to, you know, Mercedes or Cadillac when you get, see some of these other features inside these vehicles. And personally, I am really excited to see the Escalade after driving this around, I feel like that could possibly be my next car. If I was ever to get rid of our Model X and it has the NACS charger, I mean. After driving the Lyric for several days under a variety of conditions, I walked away feeling this EV really offers the best of both worlds. It's not the quickest EV in the world, though it's plenty fast for most, and it's not the most expensive either. And the Model Y and Mach-E are great alternatives. But if you want something a little more premium and a big bang for your buck, the extra ten to $15,000 will get you a pretty special EV. So what's really impressed me the most about this vehicle is just how efficient it is. So this morning we charged it up to 100% and it showed 337 miles. Now the EPA rating is 314 and then we've driven it all day. We've gone on highway, we've gone on windy mountain roads, um, off-road, a little bit of everything. It still shows that we have 157 miles. So I'm confident after driving 200 miles today that we would have been able to go at least 350 miles. Now the one thing holding back this EV, like a lot of EVs for now, is the charging experience. So we got home really late late last night and I didn't get a chance to charge the vehicle. So I wanted to do that today. I definitely want to show you the charging speeds. So this car is rated for 190 kilowatts. Our state of charge is right around 38%. Ideally, we'd like to be a little bit lower than that for a true test, but this battery is just a little bit too big. So, you know, tough problems there, but we're going to go ahead and charge it up. We're at a charging station that's rated to be about 350 kilowatts. So we'll check out what the speed is. All right. So this is the issue with these. It says pass reader currently unavailable. I am so glad that everyone is switching to the NACS. These things are just so unreliable. So I have to unplug. I actually had to switch because for some reason it doesn't want us to use this one. So we had to do the other one. Maybe we should have nosed in, but you know, these things are a little bit confusing. It's not quite as plug and play as Tesla chargers. All right, let's see if it works. Try another card. We're having so many issues. This right here is why I don't think I could ever buy anything. Look at it, we're going back into plug-in first. I'm already plugged in. This is why I can never buy something other than Tesla right now because this system is so unreliable. Um, I feel like once it switches over to the NACS, then I could perhaps buy this vehicle. But until then, this is a deal breaker for me. About to throw in the towel on this. I'm really sorry. I really wanted to show you charging speeds. After about 15 minutes of moving the vehicle around and trying different chargers, we were finally able to start the session. The highest output we saw was around 145 kilowatts with 100% charge estimating over 350 miles of range, which is pretty incredible. All right, guys, if you've watched this far along, you must have enjoyed this video, so please drop a like and share this video with other EV enthusiasts. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Hey, Google, who's your daddy? I consider everyone at Google to be my family. Hey Google, tell me a mama joke. 
Yo mama's such a star, Jupiter is considering orbiting her. <laughs> oh, I like it. Aaron Neighbor said we are on our way. What do you want to say to Aaron Neighbor? See you soon! Exclamation mark. Your message says, see you soon. Do you want to send it or change it? It's sent. Apple CarPlay is nice.